Hi, I'm Aaron Johnson. Went to college first for molecular and cellular biology. Got accepted in medical school. Decided to take a year off. During that year off, I was traveling in Central America. And I was making a lot of paintings while I, while I was down there. And I met some expat New York City artists from the 80s who had moved down to Honduras when the market crashed in the 80s. And they saw the little paintings I was doing and they suggested I go to New York and if I wanted to really be an artist, I should just do that. So on a whim, I moved to New York. Um, when I first moved here, the Jackson Pollock retrospective was up at MoMA. And that was totally new to me and really kind of earth shattering to me. I had never seen that stuff. And I started doing some really bad drip paintings in my little apartment in the Lower East Side. Having never been taught how to paint, having not had a BFA or a foundation in painting, I was really, really had an experimental approach to materials. And as I was making these kind of bad drip paintings, I became more and more interested in the little puddles of acrylic paint that would land on the floor on this plastic sheeting that I had covering the floor. And eventually I started making little collages out of these paint solids where I'd peel it up off the plastic, cut it into shapes, stick it onto canvas and so forth. Years later down the road, the way I make paintings now is painting directly onto plastic sheeting in reverse and pouring on layers of acrylic polymer and essentially peeling that off the plastic and sticking it onto another surface. Every painting is made on a big sheet of stretched plastic film, starting with the small details first. So, say the pupil of the eye comes first, the face comes behind it, the surface details of the face might be some, some veins or some kind of texture. There's an under layer that goes under that, and these, are, these layers are all separated by acrylic polymer, so you see some depth and some luminosity and some space in the layers. Um, I guess an interesting thing is the background always comes last. And the back, my backgrounds tend to be sort of loose and splashy and a little bit chaotic and out of control. You'll see a lot of splatters and pools of paint and a lot of different textures, visual textures, but the overall surface of the painting, if you're to touch it, is completely smooth like a piece of glass. People will ask me if this process means that everything is really pre-planned in the beginning, but there's a, a very general sort of pre-planning and a very intuitive open approach to allowing each area of the painting to go in its own direction as I'm working. And another sort of consequence of this way of working backwards on plastic is that every choice I make is basically locked in. I welcome the sort of mistakes, the unexpected sort of gnarly areas that happen sometimes. It's all part of the sort of grotesque overall sort of um, explosion of stuff that I'm trying to go for. Most of my paintings are actually love stories. The majority of my paintings have some kind of sexuality, some kind of erotic coupling, and it's just honestly thinking about that moment when you're with somebody that you're madly in love with and you just feel like you are just melting into your body and it's kind of a transcendental moment and like you're losing yourself a little bit into that person and your two identities are just puddling up into this melted mess of um, ecstasy. And as much as these paintings might look sort of grotesque and violent, what I'm going for is a little bit of that kind of um, erotic intensity. I'm always going for dichotomies in my work, so it might be a love story that's at the same time a battle story or this erotic kind of emotional beautiful thing that's also this corrupt, disgusting, falling apart thing.